the next book I wanted to review is a novel. Um, pretty classic novel, uh, American, but doesn't take place in America. Uh, it's called The Sheltering Sky by Paul Bowles. And I just wanted to say at the very beginning, um, this review, I'm going to read you a, a review that I've written um, that I wrote a while ago. Um, I said in my review that <clears throat> the <coughs> excuse me that it contains plot spoilers. So um, if you don't want any major plot spoilers, uh, probably a good idea to uh, stop here. Uh, just a few words about the novel, um, generally speaking, first. I found it, um, for its classic status, you know, I mean, it's sort of everyone raves about it, um, and it's really well known, I found it really underwhelming. Uh, the sense of place was wonderful, if a little bit romanticized, and in places it read like a kind of travelogue. Um, it takes place in Africa. Uh, this was one of the most interesting parts of it for me, the fact that it sounded like a travelogue. Uh, the people in the novel, the characters seemed distant and aloof and completely cut off from one another. Uh, two of the main characters named Kit and Port, uh, who are husband and wife, have presumably uh, escaped post-World War II America to explore Northern Africa. Uh, Tunner uh, sort of uh, tags along as a third wheel and uh, which sort of allows for some additional romantic interest for Kit. The title is highly ironic, as you uh, discover reading the novel. Africa has almost nothing to offer these three people other than desolation, solitude, and loneliness. Uh, the weather is oppressively hot, and it's hardly a wonder why so many people were reminded of uh, Camus' Algeria when uh, they talk about uh, North, the, the North Africa and the novel in, in their reviews. Much of the novel consists of Port, Kit, and Tunner scurrying from one African city to another in search of what even they probably don't know. Uh, even though Kit loathes Tunner, they end up taking a train ride together to one of the cities during which they romantically bond, rather unrealistically. Uh, considering her contempt for him. Uh, in fact, romantic, or at least physical, connections, uh, with the possible exception of, of the one between Port and Kit, are idealized throughout the whole novel. For example, early on, Port is led to the tent of a prostitute named Marnia, uh, whose decoy insists that she's not a prostitute. What seems to be a misunderstanding is really uh, just a cultural difference. Much, much like nature herself, uh, Marnia is bleak, alluring, and ultimately uh, incomprehensible. Halfway through the novel, Port begins to show some portentous symptoms, uh, including fever and uh, the occasional hot and cold spell. Uh, even though he shows no signs of getting any better, uh, Kit has no qualms about leaving him in their hotel room for long periods of time. Uh, it'll surprise few readers that in this land of exclusion, uh, disconnectedness from even those next to you, and disorientation, uh, Port dies. Spoiler alert, Port dies. Uh, just as unbelievable as the trysts between Tunner and Kit, and then between Port and Marnia, uh, as soon as Port dies, she leaves the hotel without pausing or even taking time to grieve. The story of their marriage up to this point had me fairly convinced that they did care for one another, but reading this made me wonder whether Port's love was uh, fully or even partially reciprocated. Uh, Port Moresby, uh, the name of one of the protagonists, uh, also happens to be the name of uh, the capital of Papua New Guinea. I'm not sure whether this uh, could be pure coincidence, I'm sure it's not, uh, but I would be eager to know what anyone else thought of this, if they noticed that. Um, it, it popped right out at me, but I just saw it mentioned in a couple of other reviews, and I had no idea what it was trying to do there, if it was just a word game or whatever. Gore Vidal said that Bull's short stories are 
uh, emblematic of the helplessness of an over-civilized sensibility when confronted with an alien culture. Uh, Port also makes it clear that he's a traveler instead of a tourist, uh, which sort of made me roll my eyes. Um, those points are central to the book. Uh, the first of these will genuinely frustrate those who think that some sort of genuine connection can be made between people of different cultures and maybe even those of the same culture. As someone who still holds hope, perhaps naively, for this kind of communication, I found the characters uh, proportionately um, unconvincing. Uh, personally, I find myself much more oriented toward Ian Forrester's exhortation to only connect which is the uh, how how uh, Forrester opens Howard's End. It is what informs uh, all of my reading, I guess, my curiosity about the world and my relationships with uh, other people. I realize that my choice is purely an aesthetic one, that ability to think that I can connect with other people. Uh, but Bull's central message diverged so much from it that I had uh, difficulty in difficulty in making the connection with any of his characters. However, as Forrester uh, might be the first to point out, even though I had trouble with its message and characters, uh, the book offered still another opportunity to uh, connect, and one which unfortunately uh, I'm a worse person for not being able to make. I didn't really like it. Is that my fault? I don't know. <laughs> uh, the Sheltering Sky by Paul Bowles.